is up, everyone? Welcome to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks, and this is a very special edition episode of Off the Cuff because it is Selection Sunday. And it's just like Christmas to me because Selection Sunday, to me, means it's the first official day of March Madness. That means all the brackets have been released, and everyone is uh, looking at them and trying to figure out who they're going to pick in their Final Four and then go on and ultimately win the 2014 NCAA men's college basketball tournament and uh all i can say about the bracket is wow the matchups are unbelievable this actually could be the first year that a 16 seed beats a number one uh seeded team in the tournament this year i personally don't have anyone any 16 seed beating a number one but i'm not going to be completely surprised if it uh if it happens um, I do have a special guest caller coming from Topmost, Kentucky, and he's going to be joining us a little bit later. Ryan Mullins, he's been featured on ESPN 680 AM Talk Radio, where he's given his opinion um, a lot on college basketball. So he's going to come on the show with us today, and he's going to talk about his bracket, talk about his Final Four, and we're going to um, you know, talk about a few other things, too. But uh, the first thing I would like to do before I bring him on is talk about my bracket. I'm looking at my 2014 NCAA bracket, and I want to tell you who I got and and tell you why. I first sat down and did a bracket um, just literally 15 minutes ago. So my bracket could change before I turn this officially into all my bracket tournaments. But I kind of like what I have, so I don't know. And before the brackets were released, I, just like everyone else, I try to make predictions on, on who I would make in my Final Four. But it always happens when the bracket comes out. Who I was thinking would be in the Final Four, it, it's not going to happen because it's impossible to get by some of the teams um, that they're matched up with in the bracket. But who I got in my Final Four this year? All right, I've got Florida, of course, the number one team in the land right now, the number one overall one seed, and I have the state of Virginia. That's right, my birth state. For those of y'all who do not know, I was born in Virginia. I actually never lived there a day in my life, but was born in the state of Virginia and moved to Kentucky that next day from the hospital. But I do have Virginia in the Final Four, and then along on the other side of the bracket, I have Arizona and Duke. And then, of course, I have in my final Florida and Arizona and the Florida Gators taking home this year's championship. Now, this is crazy because this is Billy Donovan's, this would be his third national championship. And it says a lot for a guy who's stuck with a team as long as what he has and uh, win his third national championship. It's hard. Some great, amazing coaches uh, coach a long time and do not even when one, but then you have uh, coaches like Mike Shesky, and you have coaches like Rick Pitino and, and Billy Donovan who can win multiple. And you know the fact that Billy Donovan could win his third one is pretty is pretty unbelievable. But um, like I said, I wanted to bring on a special guest caller uh, this evening. Uh, like I said, he has been featured on ESPN 680 AM Sports Talk Radio, and he's going to be uh, talking with us uh, tonight. And I have via the telephone Ron Mullins from Topmost, Kentucky. What's up, Ron? Not much. What's going on? Man, not a lot. I appreciate you joining me. And I was just telling everyone... The brackets came out today, and I've been looking at them. The first thing I said when I looked at the bracket was, "Damn, this is some weird matchups." Yes. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like if you know a, a 16 seed has never beaten a number one seed, and I, and I feel like that this actually could be the year it could happen. Personally, I don't have any 16 seed beating a number one seed, but I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. I would be shocked. Uh, see, here's my thing. You have teams like Wichita State. You have teams like Virginia, who are number one seeds. Teams that I I wasn't even watching out for during the season, and here they are landing with a number one seed. So I don't necessarily know if I believe that the teams that are seeded number one should be number one. Well, that's a good argument. When you look at the the teams that are in the 16 seed line, they're Cal Poly and Texas Southern, Albany and Mount St. Mary's, that will be the teams that will play Florida or 
Wichita State the most equity. Sure, which ones it works. You know, Wichita State's undefeated. You know, they almost beat Louisville in the Final Four last year, and that was a really great Louisville team. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Wichita State, man, that is a team that has just come up out of nowhere. Greg Marshall, it's really uh, impressive what he's done with the Wichita State Shockers, that's for sure. He's definitely one of those up-and-coming uh, coaches. Oh, no doubt. I think Wichita is a I don't think they make the 6 6 Really? Really? So you, you see Wichita um, losing to, uh, who is it going to be? Kentucky. Really? So you see Kentucky beating both Kansas State and Wichita? Yes. And then you, so uh, that makes me uh, wonder, do you have uh, the Kentucky Wildcats going against their in-state rival Louisville? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. What a Midwest matchup. You have the Louisville Cardinals facing, once again, Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. And um, who wins that matchup? Louisville. You got Louisville and do you do you have a particular reason why you choose the cards over the cats? Just the way they're playing recently, and they seem to. In that December matchup, Russ Smith and Chris Jones are still struggling to fit together. Jones was trying to be the point guard he took over, and Russ Smith was trying to take over. You're the last month, Tino Swift Smith, the point guard, and Jones off of it. Luke Hancock's back, and now Shane Mahan is on the team. Montrezl Harrell had no choice but to step up. You, you know, you're exactly right. Teams that play in December are definitely not the same teams that are playing in March. That's why I think that you, your biggest games, like a Kentucky and Louisville matchup, it shouldn't be played in December. It needs to be played at a later time in, in the year. Like, it would be awesome if you could have the Louisville and Kentucky matchup in February. Yeah. Well, Bruce Pearl and John Calipari figured it out. Memphis, Tennessee, play mid-February. I mean, those teams are in was in the form by mid-February. You had Tennessee Memphis as one of the biggest matchups in the country when it wasn't have been in December. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, those coaches had it figured out right. So, okay, well, you know that you have Louisville obviously making it into your Elite Eight. So, I want to know, let's, let's, uh, I want you to run through your bracket here really quick. And I, I want to know uh, on the, um, the Midwest, you have, going into your Elite Eight, you have... Louisville. Yes. Okay. Louisville and then out of that matchup, you have. Louisville. Okay. So Louisville, you have put in your final four. Yes, okay. but I will say, if, I think Kentucky will give Louisville the biggest matchup, and if Kentucky beats Louisville, I think they go to the final four. So you think Kentucky actually can have a decent, uh, a decent run in the tournament? Yes, but with the matchups they got. See, they're a nightmare matchup for Louisville. I, th- I think Louisville's a better team, but Kentucky could come out of that with a 9 to 10 point victory and not play their best game. And it's the same as Wichita State. Wichita State plays the pace to where they never play blow good teams out. They play the strong defense. And it's hard to stop. I had, last year, they just stopped guys like Aaron Kraft. Yeah. you got two big guys, the Harrison Twins and James Young. It's hard to play that aggressive defense, especially with the new rules, and keep them out of it. Well, got two ish Randall, Alex Down on the inside. Well, the way Kentucky's been playing the last couple games, they've really stepped it up, uh, both offensively and defensively, and they almost beat the Gators today. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the game, but they lost by one point, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, they definitely showed up today, and that's. Uh, if there was ever a time for them to show up, it's now. So I hope I hope that Kentucky can make a run. I know that I, that would sure make me happy. But okay, so you got Louisville winning the Midwest. So let's move up to the West. Who do you got meeting the Louisville Cardinals in the West? Well, I've got a major upset coming out of the West. Okay. I got Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. You got Travis Ford's Oklahoma State team. Uh, facing up with Louisville, okay? Give me your reasoning behind that. Well, one thing, I wanted to pick something a little while ago more. It wasn't surprised me to see Oklahoma State go down to Arizona. But Oklahoma State seems to regain form. I know they played bad against Kansas. But they made a run on them. And they had their struggles. I always like a team who starts out hot, and then they take their legs in their year, and then they get back form, kind of what Louisville did last year. And kind of what Kentucky's done. Those, those kind of teams always impress me. They they face adversity and then they recover from adversity. 
Marcus Smart back into the lineup. But I think they are a picking team with their own time. Okay, so that means if you have Oklahoma State meeting Louisville in the Elite Eight, you have them beating New Mexico State, you have them beating Arizona, you have them beating um, either Oregon or Wisconsin as well, or Creighton. I got, I got Oklahoma State beating I was like in the first round. Okay. And then, wow. I don't have New Mexico State out there myself. I got San Diego State. Would you say that's your biggest upset in your bracket? I'd say the West Region will probably be what destroys them. So I got Oklahoma State Creighton Elite Eight matchup, but I'm not. My confidence is probably under fifty percent on that Elite Eight matchup. Well, you know what, and it could change. Uh, that, like I was telling uh, everybody before, I actually turned my bracket in to. Uh, are you doing the billion dollar bracket, by the way? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, why not? Why not? And I, I think the rules on that is you can only do um, one bracket per household. So. I think that narrows it down a little bit. Okay, so we have... Okay, really? Okay, so we have Oklahoma State, we have Louisville, and let's go to the South. Who do you have winning in the South? I got Florida from the other side. Okay, so Florida in the Elite Eight. Now, and then, play in Florida, you have in the East? Out of the East? Yes. I I got Michigan State out of the East. Okay, so that means your... For your final four, you've got Michigan State, you've got Florida, you've got Oklahoma State, and then you have Louisville. And then your final two is who? Michigan State and Louisville. And then your national champions are? Michigan State. You know, you and the rest... Of the major analysts have picked Michigan State, and I'm I'm kind of curious. I'm wondering what is so. I mean, this is I've never seen that happen. I've never seen every analyst choose the same school unless it was. I remember in the 2012 season, a lot of uh, professional analysts had Kentucky Wildcats going on and, and winning the championship. But this year, they're picking Michigan State like they've been such a dominant force this whole season, and I don't think I've seen that from them. So why Michigan State? Why is everyone picking them? Michigan State has yet to be healthy until the last three games. And what they've done to Michigan today helped them what they've done to the Big Ten tournament. Michigan State has been without at least one player basically the entire season. Normally, two. They went to the whole Big Ten slate missing two of their key players. I got you. So, well, I mean, if you're right, then it's, it's going to be another big year for the Louisville Cardinals. They're the defending uh, national champions. And uh, if, if you have them going that far... They could actually come out and pull a, a two-peat, and there's not been a two-peat since the Florida Gators done it in 2006 and 2007, but Billy Donovan is definitely looking for his his third championship, and I, I say there's a lot of great coaches out there. We, we know that, and there's a lot of great coaches that still have, have yet to win a national championship, and it's just amazing that some of these coaches like Mike Krzyzewski, Rick Bettino, Billy Donovan can go and win more than one. It's just... It's just awesome. So if Billy Donovan wins his third one, that's a that's props. That's who I have winning it all is Donovan and, and the Gators. But you have Tom Izzo, who is another uh, national championship winner who could go on and win another title for his. Well, if you look at Tom Izzo, his seniors right now are the first four-year players he's ever had. If he, if he don't make the Final Four, this will be the first four-year class he's ever coached that don't go to the Final Four. Yeah. So he's due another Final Four. He, he is due another Final Four, man. He is an absolute amazing coach. I think he's worth every every penny he gets paid. Okay, before I let you go, Ryan, I want to talk with you about one more thing. We know that March Madness is full of emotions. It's very bittersweet. A lot of great things happen and a lot of controversial slash bad things happen. And unfortunately, a lot of coaching jobs become available during um, – or after March because of the performance that the coaches have had after the season or uh, years before that. So we've already seen one coach go down, Tony Barbie. He was the coach of uh, the head coach of Auburn. I think he's the only coach that's kind of a big name coach who has been fired. Do you know any other ones? Well, I think South Florida was a better job than Auburn. Okay, and South Florida's coach was Van Heese. And Van Heese is gone. 
I mean, the, the way Tony Barbie was fired, I don't know if you heard. Did you hear about it? Yeah. Okay, he was given his press conference, and yeah. and right after his press conference, as soon as he walked out of the room, he, he was pulled into another room by his AD and just basically said, you're fired. Tony Barbie has probably done the worst coaching job in Division One basketball this year. So you think you think that Tony Barbie definitely have, was at Auburn one too many years? Yeah. <laughs> I've never got the Tony Barbie car when they hard him. <laughs> well, uh, Auburn has definitely not had much success in the last couple of years, so I, I can see why they have done what they've done. But so you wouldn't say that Auburn is a a hot shot coaching job right now? No, I wouldn't say Auburn was in the top 50 of coaching jobs. Okay. Now, I think that available coaches that are out there that are looking for jobs, besides Tony Barbie, obviously, is uh, Mr. Bruce Pearl, who gets to come back to college basketball coaching this year. I think he is the Pearl, no pun intended, of coaches that are out there looking for a job. So do you think that, one, do you think Coach Pearl is going to come back next uh, college basketball season? And if he does, where do you think he'll go, or who do you think he'll go after? I think it'll be interesting. I thought he was, for most of the year, I would have said he'd be at Tennessee again. But that's obviously with Tennessee making it. When Tennessee should not have made them to the way tournament. SMU got a major snub. Tennessee did not have the resume to get in. I know they're playing game, but they should not have won. Quanzo Martin made the tournament, so he's there. I think, I think Bruce will come back with the right job open. I think maybe South Florida might would be the right job. I don't think Auburn is. Yeah, I mean, Auburn I is... I'm sorry, go ahead. If Auburn, Smith, if Auburn was to hard Toby Smith, I think Texas Tech may be a spot for Bruce Pearl. Yeah, I, I would love to have Bruce Pearl in the in the uh, SEC. The SEC needs more good coaches because the SEC is just a terrible, terrible basketball conference. This year was just absolutely terrible, and... I think that I don't know what else they have to do. I thought Frank Martin was going to be good for the SEC, and it's it's not been. And well, the problem is the fan base don't care. Yeah, you know, well, most it's of the not, SEC is a football it's not conference. Kentucky and Florida, they don't care. Well, do they even really care in Florida? <laughs> Billy Donovan, they don't care. Yeah. But if you notice, he went he went two straight national championships, and what was it, two or three straight NIDs? Nobody cared. You want to know my uh, my opinion? You was mentioning Tennessee. I think that Tennessee needs to fire Conzo Martin. They need to get rid of him, and they need to hire Bruce Pearl back. And if not Bruce Pearl, they should go after uh, Wichita State coach um, Greg Marshall. I think that Greg Marshall would leave the Shockers and move to Tennessee. I think it's a bigger stage, and I think he could get more recruits and and better himself at Tennessee. I don't think he would go to Tennessee. And why? I don't. I think Kentucky is the only SEC job that he would have any interest in. He showed no one last year. He was UCLA and USC top candidate, and he had no interest in either job. He's very happy where he's at. They pay him. They would match anything Tennessee would want to pay him. He's in a better recruiting area. I know that sounds weird with Tennessee, but most of the most of the top players who see the Tennessee market want to play at Kentucky. It's just, I mean, who are you going to play for in the Missouri Valley? You look, Creighton's gone now. I'll tell you where he's at in Kansas. Kansas can't get all the players. He's also got the whole Big 12 market there. So Big 12 was kind of like the SEC. It don't care about basketball, but he's building a basketball program at Wichita State. Well, well, let me ask you, what other coaches are on the hot seat? Other if, coaches on the hot seat? In your opinion. <laughs> so, do you, <laughs> do you think? Right. I think you, I think Houston's James Dickey should really be on the hot seat. Okay. Temple's ran up. He had a bad year, but it was a new conference. I, bet you, I don't think like, there's a lot of coaches on the hot seat this year. Do you feel like that there's going to be any coaching, uh, coaching swaps or any coaches moving around? What coaches do you feel like is going to leave the team they're at now and go to another team? I think Steve Masiello is Manhattan. The number one available coach out there right now, who is it? Bruce Pearl. All right, I agree with that. 
Well, Ryan, I do want to thank you for coming on the podcast today. Well, I want to ask you one thing before I go. Okay, absolutely. It's the way tournament. Okay. Who's the teams to keep an upset? Um, Who's the teams to uh, make an upset in this year's? Or keep them out. Uh, upset possible. Okay. A possible upset. Okay, let's see here. I'm taking a look at my bracket. I definitely, let's see, think that, hmm, I think that Ohio State is going to uh, pull through against Syracuse. I don't think Syracuse is going to uh, make it uh, past uh, Ohio State. I think Ohio State's going to uh, beat them. Um, I do think that Virginia I've got Virginia in my final four, so I, I don't think that – I don't know if you would consider that too big of an upset, but I do have Virginia making it to the final four. Um, I would consider that an upset. You would consider – okay. I do have Virginia making it to the final four. And then, finally, I probably have – hmm. Uh, honestly, I, yeah, I have – yeah, that's really all my upsets that I have uh, looking at it. I, I, I have some eight seeds beating nine seeds, but I really wouldn't call those upsets. See, uh, it's not, I don't have these upsets, but I'm going to tell you right now, keep an eye on Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin is a team that could go to the Sweet 16. Stephen? And Providence could also shock North Carolina. Stephen F. Austin. Dayton, Dayton, really, Dayton really wants to play Ohio State. I mean, they've been trying to play them for years, and that model won't play them. So they got that extra jump in their step. You know, they won't play it, so show them that they should. Oh, wow. I'm interested in this first team. Who'd you say it was? Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin, and they play... VCU in the South Region. All right. Wow, I've got VSU going to the Sweet 16. That wouldn't surprise me, but I'm just, I said I didn't have it. Stephen F. Austin is definitely Sweet 16. Keep an eye on Stephen F. Austin. All right, we will. Well, Ron, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, I'm going to call you back later on uh, when we have another uh, special edition episode for March Madness when it gets to our – we're either going to do one during our Sweet 16 or our Elite Eight special, but I definitely want to be talking with you about these first couple rounds in the next couple uh, days. So thank you, Ron, so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, guys, and uh, that's all that we have today for our show. I want to, again, thank Ron Mullins for being on the show. It was great having him, and his expertise is always welcome. But, ladies and gentlemen, again, this has been Adam Banks with Off the Cuff with our special Sunday selection edition of this week's episode. Thank you, guys, again. We will see you next episode.